Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever found yourself with an infected computer, Wireshark, and a packet capture? Well, if you enjoy these kind of situations, we do have another forensic contest for you. Brad again put together a little quiz, and with that, you will again receive a packet capture and have to figure out essentially what happened. There are five different items that Brad wants you to figure out, and well, whoever submits the the first complete solution will win again a Raspberry Pi this month. A solution for the quiz should come up, uh, well, probably sometime next week or so. Of course, we'll wait first for some submissions uh, to arrive. And well, sometimes security tools turn against us. The latest example, Windows Defender. Windows Defender apparently for a short time created literally tens of thousands of files in a particular directory on the boot disk of your Windows system. The files themselves were small, uh, just a little bit under one kilobyte, so many users may not have even noticed, but in some cases it amounted to 30 gigabytes and more of storage space, according to a story on Bleeping Computer. Bleeping Computer also noted that Microsoft has fixed this problem now and you should be looking for if you are running the engine version 1.1.8. 18100.6. And well, if you are not running this version, actually an older version than that, then do check for updates and that should hopefully download the latest security intelligence update for Microsoft Defender and Hivirus again, according to Bleeping Computer. But for most of you, this update should have been applied already. This is not treated as a security update that you sort of have to install, but it's really more like an antivirus signature update that updates uh, continuously in the background without any user interaction. And VMware released a critical update for its vRealize business for cloud. It's now up to version 7.6 and the problem they're patching is yet again an unauthenticated API that an attacker could use in order to gain full control over the particular appliance. So you have to fix this pretty quickly. These appliances are usually installed in the cloud and we realize a business for cloud is a product that essentially sort of allows you to monitor, manage and optimize your cloud uh, billing and the resources that you you pay for. Cisco also released two critical security bulletins. The first one affects Cisco SD WAN v manage and the vulnerabilities allow an unauthenticated attacker to essentially take over the software. There are a number of different vulnerabilities that uh, are fixed with uh, this update and some of them only affect the cluster version so read uh, the advisory carefully but essentially uh, this also actually sort of sounds like API vulnerabilities, doesn't really spell it out like this, but they're talking about uh, basically not authenticating various requests sent to the software. The second one affects Cisco's Hyperflex HX, and uh, this is a set of two command injection vulnerabilities that again would allow a user to execute arbitrary code. And to exploit the vulnerability, no authentication required. And researchers at the University of Princeton did look at a fairly obvious problem that probably anybody who has gotten a new phone number in recent years has experienced. And that's a simple fact that phone companies are recycling phone numbers rather quickly, which of course then ends up 
uh, with a lot of uh, old calls for the old user still uh, being received by the new owner of uh, the phone number. Now, these researchers looked at some of the security issues associated around this. I don't think anything uh, too uh, surprising here, really. Yes, you may now be able to authenticate as that prior user. It's often not that difficult to find out who the prior user is. For example, you may have noticed uh, that a lot of uh, SMS uh, spam these days is uh, trying to buy your house. Uh, now, uh, this often mentions your address as well. So now if you're receiving a phone number that was recently used by someone else, uh, this spam may tell you actually what the old uh, address was of the prior user of the phone number. The problem is also very similar to what we have seen with IP addresses. Phone numbers are somewhat limited in supply, in particular in some urban areas. And that's a little bit like what you're seeing with IPv4 addresses, where you're often ending up with traffic that's destined to a prior owner of that IP address. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And if you like this podcast, as usual, uh, please tell your friends about it uh, or any mentions and such in social media, of course, always highly appreciate it. Uh, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.